Okay, so to get started here, <clears throat> this is a pole building. I needed to pull out some bushes here, some trees. I had to move a little bit of dirt. I didn't have a tractor or anything, so I was doing it all with either the truck or by hand. Um, so this is just pulling out these fence posts, having a little fun with that. Some of them, I got the concrete out like this one, and <clears throat> other ones, I just snapped them off. They'd been in there probably at least 15 years. Um, so in this area, at least, the pressure-treated wood was, was mostly fine. <clears throat> this is an old rototiller of my dad. So this is on a little bit of a slope, um, which works well with a pole building. But, you know, I wanted to get the ground just a little bit, a little bit more level. And then as I brought in gravel towards the end, I'd be able to <clears throat> level everything out a little bit easier. So this, this was a lot of work and cleaning this out, but, um, you know, it maybe took the morning to get that all set up before really actually getting going on, on, uh, construction. So the site prep is, is important. It's a big part. Um, if you have <clears throat> some help, makes it a little easier. I didn't have any help this weekend. Um, I built 90% of this over three days. So kind of goes to show that you can do that too. I had everything delivered <clears throat> on site real close to where I'd be building. Um, I kind of talked to them <clears throat> about how to stack it, at least have the pressure treated on top so you're not digging through everything. Um, for this pool building, you know, it's going to hold lawnmowers and, and uh, yard equipment. It doesn't need to be airtight, but it needs to keep things dry. So I'm, I'm coming off the house and I'm running a string line from the stem wall of the house to get me as straight as possible with, with the house itself. So this long wall um, can be as close to possible to the house. Here you can see I'm pulling diagonals. So I measure my first two pins and then I know what the diagonals are from my SketchUp and I'm just uh, measuring from both just to make sure things are relatively square. We'll double check everything when we're all done. So that's pulling from both posts and I can't remember exactly what the number is, but um, I modeled everything and knew what it should be by the time that, that uh, I got there. And so these are just pins <clears throat> that I'm putting in each corner and I'm gonna use these to run a string line, get it semi-square. Um, so I marked it with some orange paint. I started at the high side here. So you, you want to start at the high side. Um, and I just put this, this board as low as it possibly can, or as close to as low as it can. Um, screwed that in, <clears throat> did that around all four corners. Then we'll hit the next one, put a nail. What I'm trying to do is line this nail up <clears throat> so the string line goes right over my pin. Um, I grabbed a scrap 4x4 four four and just kind of marked where the center of these these uh, posts would be. And then I got to digging. I know a lot of places in auger would work. I, don't, I just don't think it would have worked here. Once you get down about 18 inches, there's just big river rock. I did not get much footage of the actual setting of the post, but I can explain it here. Um, dug the holes, put each of the posts in the holes, um, and then about three of them at a time, I poured the concrete, and then I attached that bottom board there, and that kind of kept um, them all plumb. I put several nails in there first, and then I put uh, some angle braces, like you see on the back right here of the screen, to hold them up plumbing level. It ended up mostly good. It wasn't perfect, um, but it's pretty dang good. So for one person, it worked out all right. And wood's not perfect either. So, you know, as I went up and I noticed things were out of whack, I was able to kind of bend and uh, work things into place to, to where they needed to be to be a pretty dang square and uh, building and, and uh, with level plumb walls. So the next one I just measured up, I put these the strapping about every uh, two feet okay so this ended up being about eight foot so I started at the bottom I make sure that bottom board is level all the way around and then I just cut spacers that I used all the way around I lined it up with my one side here um, and just kind of as I went down I checked each post for plumb and level um, kind of pulled things where they needed to go as much as I could um, to keep everything 
level as I was going up. So I put, I don't know, four or five nails in, in each, each of these, uh, each of these two by fours going across just as I went up. Um, after I did one wall, I came back, cut what I needed to cut. So all the extra got cut off and I did the same thing going in the other direction. You can see some longer braces there on the left. Just using that to kind of manipulate that pole a little bit to get it where I need it to be um, in terms of, you know, just all the poles being as level as possible. It wasn't easy setting them as, as one person, but you know, do, the, do the best you can. Um, you can notice the pole in the middle there. It's taller because that's going to be my ridge beam. Um, so I just kind of work my way around and, you know, once you attach these, these, uh, these boards going across, you're going to get a lot more strength out of the building. Everything kind of gets tied together. This is going to be the, uh, barn doorway opening here. So doing the same, just making sure I'm level all the way around, nailing it off. Got uh, the same here. These posts, I just used gravel in them. I'd use tamped gravel. Um, I've done it before, it works well. I concreted all the other posts, but just the two, the two that hold the door are just, are just put the same depth of sitting in gravel. Um, and I run a, end up running a two by 12 header across this, so that kind of keeps everything strong for it needs to be. But just repeating the same process, cutting off excess that needs to be cut off, work my way up, getting everything nailed off. Um, Eventually, we end up with a building that's pretty much framed out, ready for the roof. This is a pole building. It's pole building construction, so it's you know it's different than what you would see something that has a foundation. But you could save a lot of money doing things this way. Cutting all the the uh, roof rafters now. So I would just cut one end with the corner, I'd slide it all the way down to the pole, and I set up the saw where I need it, so that way I can get the whatever 20, 20 to 22 that I needed all the same without measuring things. When you don't have to measure things, it just it gets, things can go a lot faster. So this is an angled cut at both of them. I did all of it on SketchUp to get the right angle. Um, and then once I got things set up, it was just boom, running through. In, in this area, it's it's a pretty high wind area, um, and I built some other things here, and they want the hurricane clips that you see up top there. So I, I attach those at the ridge. I just nail it off, and then I attach them with the <clears throat> with those hurricane clips at the bottom. So this is just running on a the beam. There's a 20 foot double. I think I did two by eight, which should be plenty for this roof. Um, and then I, whatever the angle was, I just, I did it. I made it so the rafters can all be cut out of eight foot with, with very little waste. Um, I, one thing you didn't see was I did go, once I put that last two by six at the top, I did a two by six just cause that's gonna be holding most of the roof load. Um, I went around and I cut the four by four posts off at that level line. So at eight feet up, all the posts were cut. Um, that's the very end after I put all the, the strapping on, on around the posts and then worked my way around um, and cut off each of those poles. I ended up using a chainsaw, it just kind of made the most sense. Um, so here I'm, I'm finishing out these gable ends before I do anything. Uh, you know, I wanted this to be low cost. So for this, we just used uh, fence pickets, which are pretty cheap. Um, I just, I put them up, I glued them, I nailed them, and then I cut off the extra. It looks really good. Uh, the main reason for this is so when I go and put the siding up and I use eight foot sheets of siding, I can just butt up to that gable end that I already finished out and not have to cut anything, just nail things off and, and move along. That's just a brad nailer I'm using, just nailing it up till I can till that glue sets up. It was hot out, so I started this, I think it was September. I did 95% of it in, in September, and then I came back in December and finished what needed to be finished out for, this is ultimately for my parents, so. I come through with a reciprocating saw and I cut out the rest of these ends. 
Um, just getting it lined up with the line of the roof there. The drip edge will cover any nasty cuts that come from that. Um, but yeah, just working my way down. Uh, I could have used a flush trim router as well. Um, this is just what I had. This was what was out. This is what was easy. So just ran that along the, the rafter line. Moving, adjusting the ladder all the time. And I know some of the things are not always the safest, but try to use common sense and do the best you can do when you're working alone. Um, you know, it'd be good to have my safety glasses on. It'd be good for a lot of things, but it's a lot going on. Sometimes you forget. So here's the building, um, siding. We just threw it up real fast, nailed it off along all those, uh, strappings that we put on. We butted that up to the gable ends. We got a white metal roofing in from Lowe's and you know, the siding and the roof, they go really fast. You just, you get them up. Check your lines, make sure you're going to end up okay at the other end um, with wherever you set the first sheet and work your way down. Everything ended up being pretty square on this building. Um, if it's not, if your roof's not or your walls are not, well, if your roof's not, leave the gap at the gable at the top. And if your walls are not, then then figure out where you want to hang it over at and, and cut it off. But we ended up pretty good on this one. I want to show this sketch up just so you get a few ideas. This is how I figured out how many materials I need. Um, the posts, first thing you should know are the posts are set at 15 and nine inches. And the reason for this is then when I add the strapping, uh, it ends up being 16 foot because you have an inch and a half here and an inch and a half on that side. Um, the second thing is on this building, this is why it's valuable to, to uh, draw everything out from materials and some of these measurements you can do them but it's just easier on the computer so this is my diagonals when i when i show it measuring i'm measuring i need that number and this number which would be 11 feet and nine inches on in my case from here to here i need that to be um to be exact and that's how i square the building up okay so i missed the last part of the construction process of this but we got the roof on, sheet metal roofing, and these are structural panels along the side, structural siding panels. Um, came in here, hung some hooks, built a loft, get stuff up off the floor. And we got hooks all over this place, so some shelving out of some old closet doors, some hooks, a big loft. The way I did the loft is we just attached to each post a ledger, and then these floor joists run across there. Spots to hang up stuff, they're just real simple. Two by fours angled up, glued and nailed. Good for holding up garden tools, but just getting stuff off the floor and it's a good space. Got two riding mowers, yeah, several mowers, several other big items you just don't need to keep in the house. So these doors, this is a exterior, no, interior barn door hardware, but it's working, it's holding up, it seems like it's decent quality. I'm sure you can do this your own way, um, but this works, it's worked out well. So I'll just show the doors real quick. 